guys, welcome back to another video of it. Well, plays today we're playing Laws of Attraction from Choices. Let's begin. McRob Brand is at risk of losing their biggest client. You need to make it right. Chapter 6, Age of Majority. You're in a room with a firm's most important client, and he's fuming. He pace, paces face red as Sadie and Gabe placate him. If you can't fix this, what kind of lawyers are you? Philip, there's no need to get upset. We're here to help. We Really? Is that why you sent in this pack of puppies? I've never seen any of these children in my life, Sadie. Gabe catches your eye and he tilts his head slightly towards Mr. Rot Rot Rothswell, mouthing the words. Back my play. Philip, I assure you we're taking this very seriously. It's why we specifically enlisted this team. He turns to you expedently. Yeah, that's right. Yes, that's right. We need some more information. I understand you're upset, but until you let us know what you need from us, do you, do you not think I would get to that? Honest to God, where you find the find this one? Of course, I just thought. Gabe's eyes flashes with annoyance, but he, when he turns to the client, he's totally in control. What my associate is trying to say is we're all eager to start offering you the best possible counsel. Before you ev ev <sighs> Why don't you try telling us what's got you so worked up? Mr. Rothwell grimaces, unable to look at any of you directly. He finally, finally, he takes a seat in the chair next chair. Sadie's holding out for him. The rest, the rest of you settle in around the table. The problem is my daughter, Lydia. She's 17 now, and well, she's out of control. I kept, I keep telling her mother. That Lydia needs rules and punishment, but it's like I'm talking to a wall. And if I try to lay down the law on my own, Lydia just flounces off to her mom's house. Don't know where she gets the, the nerve. I'm betting everyone else in this room can make a pretty good guess where she gets it. I tried to tell myself it was a phase. And usually it's easy enough to clean up her messes. What sort of messes are you referring to, if you don't mind my asking? Well, oh, setting a fire in the built in the library that at that Tony's girls' school, well she goes to. Or last week she took a joyride to my vintage rose roaster and crashed it. Was she hurt? No, thank God. Though maybe she she have learned something from the whole fiasco if she had been. Hurting a vintage roaster should be enough. Those cars are works of art. It sounds like Ladia is pretty used to getting her way. Yes, she. She has the famed Rothswell drive. And she's using it to flow pl straight into my, a wall. We've always been able to help with help with when Lydia has gotten a bit too enthusiastic in the past. What's got you so worried this time? It's not what 
It's who? Joey, the little scumbag. I'm guessing he and Lydia have gotten close recently. He's got her wrapped around his little f finger. He's 30, he's 23, and she's 17. He's preying on my baby girl. Oh. She's not at the age. She's not at the right age. Gross, dude. Going after high school girls in your 20s is not a good look. Legally, though, he hasn't done anything wrong. In New York State, 17 is the age of consent. Wait, what? Hold up, I gotta look this up. Okay, it says, okay, I'm looking up the age of consent in, in here, it's, I'm going to New York, 17, oh, oh, it is 17. Well, and since I'm in Pennsylvania, age of consent for me is 16. Yeah, no. I did not know that. I thought it was I thought it was always just 18, but hey, but in New York it's 16. It's but in New York it's 17. And in Pennsylvania, where I am, is, um, 16. Why can't... I thought it was always... I thought the age of consent was, like, 18. For all states. Trust me, I spent more than a few sleepless nights trying to find a, find a way around that. But there's nothing I can do, apparently. I assure you, Philip, if there's an answer to this, we'll find it. On that note, fire when ready, team. I want to know more about Joey. Hmm. Why don't you trust him? It's the way he talks to her. He's always putting her down, and she's too young to even know and see how he's trying to undermine her confidence. She's convinced they are in love, and he's using that innocent to take advantage of her. So you think Joey's a gold digger? <laughs> Kanye West song. I'm sure of it. He's after Lydia's inheritance, plain and simple. You mean your inheritance, right? But well, we've helped you protect that, haven't we? Mostly, but the trust fund from my wife's parents and the parents is set to transfer to Lydia, free and clear the moment she turns 18. And her birthday is right around the corner. I'm afraid she'll do something stupid. Maybe even marry this idiot just to spite me. We'll protect Lydia. She might not see it yet, but she's still just a kid. Frankly, she's lucky to have a father like you looking out for her. Maybe. Though she wouldn't be such an easy target f if it weren't for me. I thought you say this say this trust fund was from her grandparents. It is, but even if Lydia's is the the one getting the money, I'm their target I'm their target here. You remember what the divorce was like? Sadie Sadie, how ugly it got? 
I do. And I recall your wife's parents using your legal goons to try and take you to the cleaners. Now that we let them get away with it. Maybe you should have. I think they're still angry with me for hurting their daughter. And they're using Lydia to get back at me. Philip, I'm sure you know. No, we can't change the terms of the fun Lydia's grandparents have set up. Though, maybe if you spoke with them? Washwell sighs and puts his head in his hands. If I th thought that would work, I'd have led it with it. But ever since Jessica and I split, trust me, they won't listen. So they'll hurt their own granddaughter to get back at you. Classy. The room falls silent as everyone looks to Sadie. She tilts her chin, her eyes on Gabe, but the silence stretches until... So we can't change the terms of the trust, but if we... We could get through the Lydia instead. Gabe smiles and only seemingly to pick up on your thought. True. We don't have to, have to change the trust if we, if we can persuade the trustee. For the... Let my associate meet with Blight while Sadie and I, I work on other situations. I mean, solutions. If, if, if anyone else, if anyone can join, can convince her to cut Joey loose, they can. Mr. Roswell looks around the room at all of you. Fine, but if you can't protect my little girl, I'll be taking my business elsewhere. Understood. We'll sort it out. Philip, I assure you, when haven't we ever not? Sadie. <coughs> Sadie escorts Mr. Roswell towards the lobby, leaving you, ga you, Gabe, and the other seniors so he's behind. This is going to be a cakewalk. I was, I was the most popular guy at my sporting. Oh, good. I'm sure your keg stand prowess will win her over in no time. This is serious. We only have one day to convince Lydia to cut her boyfriend loose. Aslan's right. See, so he wouldn't have called you in if this weren't important. Seems confident. If she's not worried, why should we be? You need to work on your observation skill. Anything. Sadie might have a, have kept a straight face, but I promise you, she's plenty worried. That's because if we lose Phil Roswell, this firm might not might very well. Blah. What does he expect us to do, exactly? We're attorneys, not family counselors. We're anything that we need to be. If it makes the client happy, and he expects us to fix it, this no matter what it takes. I dealt with Lydia before. She used, she's used to getting what she wants, and McGraw Bryn has helped ensure she's never face real consequences. And this time, what she wants is exactly what we're supposed to convince her to give up. So what are we going to do? You all are going to go, are going to, going to Roswell Mansion to win Lydia over. I'm looking to, I'm going to look into details of the trust, excuse me, fun, and hope for a loophole take. Take these with you. It's still bare bones, but at least you'll know the major players. He hands out files to each of you and you quickly flip yours open. Should you, like, come with us to the mansion since you already know her and all? Are you asking me? Are you asking for a babysitter? Definitely not. But if this case is as important as you say it is, Lady knows me as a as her father's attorney. I'm already the, ma the enemy of admitting to her. If this is going to work, it's up to you, up to all of you. Great, so no pressure then. 
He haven't worked it out by now, Anthony. McGraw Bryn lives for the pressure. So then the five five of you pile into a, a town car which takes you you north of Manhattan to the Roswell City home. A a a plat estate surrounded by massive manicured grounds. This place is even bigger than my grandma's. Was how many? How many billable hours do you think you need to put in for a place like this? I'm gonna guess several lifetimes worth. I thought you might say that. This place is beautiful. It's like an old fashioned country estate. <laughs> in the middle of a, the city. Are those peacocks on the lawn? I think so. And those are definitely swans in the f front. When I imagine heaven, it's it's exactly like this, but with more video games. Well, there's no point staying here gawking. Let's go introduce ourselves. As a much as to the front of the do front door, before she can knock, it opens. <coughs> Welcome. I'm Mr. Fallon. Like Jimmy Fallon? <laughs> the butler. Mr. Roswell? Mr. Roswell telephoned, telephoned to say you'd be arriving. I'll send Jane to fetch Miss Lydia. She's in her quarters, so it may take a while. In the meantime, would you like to like a tour? More than you can imagine. I'd be down to see how the other half have have of a half of a half of a percent lives. In that case, please follow me. Wow, I didn't recognize you could fit a pool this big inside. Is that a dolphin? Is that a dolphin in the water? A common bottlenose. I'm afraid the city wouldn't alter these re their regulations to allow rare species no matter how much Mr. Roswell tried. Who puts a dolphin in a swimming pool? The Roswell Grand Ballroom. A week ago, we held a soror sorority in honor of Prime Minister. The Prime Minister visit. <laughs> I heard about the visit, but there wasn't any sorority in the news. That's by design, Miss Tanaka. Heads of the state would rather... <laughs> Rather, they're more discreet shenanigans, not reach the press. It was a gift from one of Mr. Rodbrod's clients, but to be quite honest, no one except the housekeeper's son can figure out the controls. Happy to add my name to that shortlist. Be my guess. Just know the replacement cost is well, it's irreplaceable. I'll hold off for now, actually. <laughs> Just then, a woman in the light, in a light blue Roswell uniform, comes up to Mister to Mister Valen, whispers in his ear. He nods and turns to you all. Miss Lida is to re is ready to receive you in the kitchen. Please feel free to call for me if you'd like. To resume your tour afterwards. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. Mr. Fallon takes you through a hallway into a sh into the sh into the. I'm so sorry. Into a chef's quality kitchen. A teenager standing at the fridge. She looks up briefly to glare at you. Looks like my dad sent a whole army of suits. Let me guess. He wants you all to tell me he wasn't Joey is. She plucks a bottle of smoothie from the fridge and takes you the last sip, unbothered by your presence. Well, you're wasting your time. I'm actually, I'm basically an adult. I can make my own decisions. <laughs> Wow. 
What should I say? Your dad sent us, and that's pretty much why. Seriously? You're just gonna admit it? You know your dad, and you, and you know he's worried. Why bother lying to you about it? Wow, one of Dad's hired guns actually shooting straight. I never imagined I would see that. Still, it sounds to me like Dad's and his lawyers want me to try to get his way. You're not. We're not here to get what your Dad wants, Lydia. We're here to help you get what you want. Lydia places his movie on the counter and leans a, leans a hip against the cabinet. I'm listening. I trust from your grandparents is the trust from your grandparents is significantly your your dad is worried that much money could be hard to manage so young. What does he care what I do with the money? It's not like it, it even affects him. It does actually. It's his family's legacy you'd be destroying if you decide to act out. Lydia's face closes off, her tone turn, turning icy. My legacy is none of your business. You have no clue what it's like to be me. And neither does my does dad. Make it even. Nice catchphrase. But, now, but how exactly am I supposed to get even with my dad for treating me like a child? You show him you're not. I've only known him briefly, but I can but I can tell your dad is very results. Uh, tell me about it. That's probably tough for you, but right now you can use it to your advantage. Show him there's nothing to worry about, <laughs> and he'll back off. You may have a point, but Joey, the man who actually loves me, is waiting for me downstairs in the bowling alley. I'm sorry, bowling alley? She turns and walks out, out of the kitchen, leaving the five of you behind. G, G sniffs. Wow, Martin, you really have a way with the youth. It's not my fault the girl is completely oblivious. Okay, but you could have been a little less harsh, dude. Anthony was actually making headway before you started throwing around legacies. I still think I could get get through to her. At least if we could just spend a little more time with her. I'm pretty sure sure we can. She practically invited us to the bowl, that bowling alley. She wants us to see her relationship for real. It's certainly worth a shot. After all, if we leave things like that, like they are for now, Game say will not be happy. But if we Big Lebowski it, we could win some serious points. If I want to hold on to that top slot, it'd be smart to keep impressing the partners. They have a bowling alley in their house. How rich do you have to be to own a bowling alley in your house? We can't leave things like this, for her or for us. Agreed. Which is why I think think you should take point on this, Anthony. It's the best chance we have of convincing her. <laughs> Much as I hate to admit it, Anthony did seem to have the best rapport with her. Just goes to show there's no... Uh, accounting for tastes. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Now I have a young woman to talk to. You hurry after her, catching up to her in the hallway just outside. She turns you with a smirk. Hey, Lydia. Was that a bowling invite? Because my game is strong. She folds her arms and frowns, looking at you and the associates who have followed you. Why would I invite you? We charge your dad by the hour. Martin will hate it. In case you hadn't noticed, I'm kind of trying to get away from Martin right now. 
Yeah, but you could be ruining his day instead. The guy hates fun. It's I do not. I love fun. Just last night I was curling up with a copy of the Financial Reporter. Where? Oh my God, that is 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 an even lamer thing to say than I expected. Can I make him more shoot? What? No, I don't agree to you. It's your party, Lydia. If you want us to dress up in a clown in clown suits and sing the Star Spangled Banner, you can make it happen. Her lips curl into a smirk as she stares at Martin, considering. Fine, you can tell you can tag along, but this doesn't mean I'm agreeing to anything. Okay. Understood. Follow me. The bowling alley's in the basement. Again, how rich do you have to be to have a bowling alley in your house? You win past dozens of rooms before finding a staircase that leads downstairs. Wow. Whoa. This is a basement in the same way that the Taj Mahal is, is a country home? Really? Compared to our country home, this really isn't much. What? You have a bar in here too? Easy. As you turn around, you keep seeing more things. A bar, a, spe a supper kitchen, what looks like a game arc gaming arcade. Is that a... Egg? Who cares about the eggs when there's a... There's a magic... Make margarita maker right, right there. How do these people take marks seriously? I haven't even heard of most of these whiskeys, and I've had a lot of whiskey in my life. And does your dad just let you hang around all this alcohol? Laya's dad doesn't let my girlfriend do anything. She makes her own choices. A man holding holding a margarita saunters across the room and slings his arm around Lydia's shoulder. Joey, meet the lawyers from Daddy's favorite law firm. Lydia's, Lydia's light eyes light up with puppy dog adoration as she plants a kiss on her ch Trying to control you again, huh? Want me to get rid of them? Why does your smile wavers a bit as she looks back and forth between you and Joey? Then she shakes her head. Nah, this one's not that bad. So I said th that they could stay for a, a game. It was like someone's already uh, drinking the Kool-Aid. We talk about this, remember? I remember. It's not like it was working on me, though. I saw through it right away. Sure, babe. But you sh but you know how you get confused about this stuff. That's why I'm here to look out for you. Oh yeah, you're probably right. This guy's clearly done a number on her self-confidence. I need to get Joey away from Lydia if I want to make any progress. As Joey pulls Lydia closer, you t temper your disgust and turn to your colleagues. Lean over and whisper to Aslan. Can you guys, can you and Gigi run an interference? Definitely. She flashes Gigi a meaningful look, then turns to Joey, smiling broadly. Who's up for foosball? I've always wanted to play, but I don't really have a lot of practice. I'm in, but fair warning, I'm better at scoring goals on my own team than the opposition. Joey Cole's lips curl into like a wolf leer. <coughs> yes, he's taking the bait. Don't worry, ladies. I'll go easy on you. Care to make a make a little wager on the game? So what's fair, GG? Where GG? A hundred? Each I could handle that. They move over to the table. You see both sucking 
his lower lip ascending the situation then he gives you a quick nod Lydia is Lydia is it cool if Martin and I mix up some marks Bo we're not here to Bo elbows him sharply in the ribs luckily Lydia doesn't seem to notice sure whatever tequila's on the bottom left <laughs> of course as the others head for the foosball table on the other end of the room, you turn to Lydia, her f eyes still are still fixed on Joey. Up for a game? Lydia snarls, her eyes seemingly glued to Joey at the foosball table. Huh? Oh, right. Bowling. I haven't been bowling since law school, so throw a few pit pity gutter balls? Yeah. Not gonna happen. Roswell's don't hold back. Seems, seems to hear herself dropping the family name and blinks. What I mean is, if you want, I can show you how to throw the ball right. I got lessons. That'd be great. I didn't even know they had lessons in bowling. For bowling. All you have to do is just throw the ball. Trust me, they have lessons for everything. Just ask my dad. He signed me up for about 90% of them. She rolls her eyes, but more in loving expression than real annoyance. So it sounds like it's n like not all bad with your father. It didn't used to be. You know he cares about you, right? Let's just bowl. You're interrupted by the sound of a loud cheer from Gigi. I thought you said you weren't good at this game. It's just physics, and I think they're making sense of me. If you count that point, I'm walking. Don't get upset. We can always go double or nothing if you want. You move over to the lane and set up for your first frame as Lydia watches Joey on the other side of the room, a sad smile on her face. Seems like Joey's got a temper. Oh, he's just competitive. It's not a big deal. You know him better than I do, obviously. I was I was wondering, though, how he treats you. How he treats you. He's so sweet to me. Always bringing me flowers and texting and stuff. That's nice. He's nice. He's nice, and he's helping me work on myself, too, you know? Like, most people at my school just suck up to me because I'm rich, but Joey loves me enough to be honest about what I do better. He even makes sure I work out every day so I can be my hottest self. That sounds constructive. Joey's the only person who's ever seen me for me. I don't want to lose him. Why would you lose him? Seriously, my dad is sending lawyers after him trying to get us to break up who would want to deal with that but he told me I'm worth fighting for no one's ever said that before and you're not worried he has an ulterior motive no way he didn't even know who I was when I when we met when he did find out I uh, who I was he almost broke up with me I had to convince him to stay he tried to break up with you Sort of. He said he didn't deserve me. I think he was just worried about my age. And my dad. I just need to prove to Joey that I can be an adult. Then things will fall into place. You feel like you need to prove yourself to him. Well, sometimes. Well, sometimes. But isn't that normal in a new relationship? Like, can, can I give you a bit of advice, not as a lawyer, just as a person who's been around the block a few times? I mean, sure, if you want. Make sure you always trust your gut. Sometimes we want something to be true so badly that we'll ignore the red flags. But you're smart. I think you might already be seeing a couple. I don't know what you're talking about. Joy treats me super well. At least, 
most of the time. I'm not telling you to focus on the negative here. I'm just saying if anything happens that does feel off or like he's pursuing you, listen to that. Little voice inside, okay? That makes sense, I guess. But isn't love supposed to be about taking risk? It's like that in all movies. Leia, do you trust me? She licks her lips, eyes darting to Joey, then nods once. Well, I guess I do trust you. No one has ever bothered to listen to my side of it. Then all I'll say is, when you really care, you can get really hurt. This is new. You have all the time in the world. Don't take risks you're not ready for. Her eyes drift to the foosball table again, and you can see the longing in her on her face. The pain of having fallen for someone hard. So you're really not going to tell me I have to break up with Joey? Nope. You can make your own choices. But Lydia, don't let anyone make you feel like you're not good, good enough. Especially someone who's supposed to love you. She turns to you stunned as though realizing something for the first time. I never thought of it that way. But do you think... Just then, Lydia's smart watch lets out a little chime. She glances at it and shakes her head. It's already two? Sorry, I gotta go. My AP chemistry tutor is here. Joey, can you show everyone out? Sure thing. But aren't you forgetting something? He points to his cheek, tilting his head expensively, obediently. Laya walks over to give him a kiss. Ben darts away. Joey waits until she's gone before he turns to look at all of you. Well, I guess it's time for me to show you all the door. So tell me, how much do bloodsuckers like you get paid to bully teenage girls? That's right. She is a teenager. Sure. Almost forgot since she's a dating a 23-year-old. If she wants to get with me, who are you, you to tell her no? You don't even know us. Aslan looks at you and shakes her head so carefully you almost miss it, but you follow her lead. You're right. We don't know you. Maybe we can fix that. Yeah, why don't you tell us more about you two again? You two? How did you meet again? It was pouring out, and Lydia's dad kicked her out of the Bugatti near, the, near her school without an umbrella. Luckily, I was ready to ready and waiting to save the, to save the day. He's he was clearly paying attention to the car her dad was driving, and it sounds like he plants their spontaneous meet cute. As Joy runs a hand through her through his hair. And notice a gold chain around his neck with the initials ML on the tag. Hmm. Not Lydia's initials. I wonder what else might be off about this guy. He turns away from you, and he, as he does, you see a poker hand tattooed on his arm and a tube of sunscreen sticking out of his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Who's ML? Joy glances at the necklace like he's just noticed he's wearing it. He covers the initials. That, uh, that stands for my Lydia. Though that would be obvious. Asin leans in to whisper in her ear. <laughs> well, that was clearly a lie. Maybe that's our lead. You clearly seem to be around the house a lot. Do you have? Do you not have a job? It's my job to make Lydia happy, and I'm very, very good at it. I'm at a job, working. Gigi manages to turn her gagging noise into a cough. Joey turns to you with a leer. Oh, come on, like, you don't know what I mean, I guess. I mean, I would. I would do you in a heartbeat, and you kind of... What? Hey, what if Lydia heard that? Lydia, car Lydia cares about you. What would she think of? Think if she heard you hitting on me? Probably what she would think. That she needs to do her best to make sure I don't stray. You don't sound very committed to her. I am as long as she earns it. 
you finally reach the door and Joey glances over you all with a smirk. Nothing you said s seems to have rattled him. Looks like this is your stop. I say I hope to see you again, but I don't. Once you're all safely back in the town car, Aslan lets out a heavy sigh. Before I just wanted, before I just wanted to make Mr. Roswell happy, but now I'm generally more worried for Lydia. She's young, but she can't be that stupid, right? Besides, I was clearly getting through to her. I think maybe she's starting to see Joey for what he is. If they have you ever had anyone like Joey mess with your head, it's not about smart or stupid. Gee's right, when someone methodically breaks your confidence down like that, it could take years before you recover. If I were Lydia's father, I'm, I have bribed my way out, made out of a murder charges already. What's, what's the point of worrying? She's gonna do whatever she wants, whether we worry or not. What, what, so we just tap out now? Stop bothering to help her? I'm not saying that, and I'm not trying to be a buzzkill, but we're all thinking it, right? I can speak for them, but I w differently was. Back at the firm, you all gather in Sadie's office in to debrief her vi on the visit. Tell me what happened exactly. The bad news is that Joey really has his claws on Lydia. She actually thinks she thinks that he ran into her by accident. But it's pretty clear he planned, planned the whole thing. Tell me you found a smoking gun. Not quite. I think we made a real connection with her. Anthony's being modest, Lydia. Lydia really warmed up to him. Without him, I think we'd still be at square one. Well done, Anthony. I've known Lydia Roswell for years now. Gaining her trust isn't an easy thing to manage. Sadie turns to her fingers, eyes narrowing, and you can practically see the wheels in her mind turning. You met Joey as well. Yes. If Lydia is a lost cause, can we put the pressure on him instead? That's that. Hmm. We can find a better target for him. If he thought there was a bigger fish to land, maybe he'd leave Lydia alone. That could work. Remind me what is the size of that trust Lydia is about to inherit. She's about to become one of the five richest women in New York. Good luck finding a better target than that. Right now, I think our best hope is Lydia coming to her senses. Sadie leans back in her armpit chair, raises a hand to her temple. That's disappointing, especially since I've made contact with some friends at Whitley Hatchet who represents Lydia's grandparents, and there's no chance that they'll you know, change the trust terms. In fact, it was like Philip was right. I think they want her to blow the money and go wild a little wild. What is with this family? Seriously, it's like something out of a gothic novel. That's a very expensive, expensive way to make a point. He was Lydia's mom. The murderer relative or, relative or, I don't know, curse her for all eternity? What, what could possibly deserve this? Honestly, the divorce was contentious, but I don't think there was any, especially the incident that caused it. It was, however, front page of every tabloid in for months. Philip Roswell's ex-wife had her reputation absolutely ruined in the aftermath. Her parents want Philip to suffer in similar measures. But Lydia is their granddaughter. That logic doesn't make any sense. Angry people aren't logical. They probably think Lydia is in her dad's pocket. But if all that's true, what's the plan here? In McGrawbrin, we don't lose clients, so we're going to have to rethink our approach. Sounds like Anthony chipped away at Lydia's resolve. Maybe that that will bear fruit. In the meantime, focus on your other cases. I'll let you you know 
next steps on this just as soon as I I know those are a few hours later you're looking through witness statements for your pro bono case when there's a tap at the door say you brought me up to speed on what happened with Lydia let's talk about how we didn't get anywhere I've known her since she was two at which point she she would hold her breath until she turned blue if her dad refused her the cookie she wanted she I wasn't exactly expecting you to win her over in a matter of hours so you, we were just stalling could have told us you sent all of, all five of us out on a pointless time just like why waste our time that way? I don't see it as a waste. We showed Philip Roswell that we're taking this very seriously. Besides, you bought me time to think, which is I, which I consider very important. Glad to help, I guess. In any case, you should consider joining me tonight. Oh, where would we be going? <clears throat> to a client dinner with Jason Cartwright. He's the CEO of the major auto parts manufacturer in Ohio. Whenever he comes to town, he f likes to feel a big shot. It's my job to make sure that happens. Oh, and how do you do that? By gracing him with your presence? It certainly doesn't hurt my name. And does open doors. And having you there alongside me would only help create the effect he's after. Besides, I know for a fact that Sadie is watching every move each one of you makes. Seeing that, I've elected you to bring you along tonight. Well, it can only increase your stock in her eyes. Just let's just say I've always been aware of what I would I have to offer, and right now I can offer you a chance to impress Sadie and me. His eyes drift down. Ugh. I'll pass tonight. I'm still playing catch up after the field trip to the Roswell mansion since someone sent me on a wild goose chase. I only have myself to blame. Just remember, sharp brains are more valuable to make Rob Brin than a few extra billable hours. You watch Gabe stroll easily back out the out of your office, wondering what you might have missed on. Much later you head home. Back home, you fix yourself a cup of tea and settle onto the couch with a stack of briefs. Let me guess. They're going to text us. Or call us. Either one. Let's see. It's like it's going to be another late night. At least I can have a comfortable place to spread out, though. Eventually, you doze off on the plush calls. The lights, on, lights of the city twinkle through the windows behind you. Okay, never mind. The next day, all of the associates are gathered in the firm's library, desperately searching similar cases for a creative solution to your Roswell problem. This case looks promising. If we could have declared unfit, we could have we could put a stewardship on the trust. That ruling over. That ruling got overturned on appeal. <sighs> Not to mention we'll have a very hard time proving Lady is out unfit. That's it. We're going over the same background at this point. I'm officially declaring it time for more coffee. <laughs> <sighs> she takes your orders and steps out of the recaffeined knit the team leaving the rest of you huddled at the table. I wonder, there might be somewhere something to Martin's idea. <laughs> of course there is. She's a ticking time bomb with an undeveloped prefrontal cortex. Bring up any of her past offense 
and a judge would freeze that money fast. <laughs> Maybe. That would hurt a lot of you. It's hard enough to be that age already. Can you imagine what it would be would do to her if we had her declared legally unfit? Short term, sure, she hated, but it would help her in the long run, and that's what th th her dad wants. Not if it doesn't get rid of Joey. It doesn't. It will get rid of him if he just, if he's just after the trust, which we can safely assume he is. That decides it. That decides it, then. We shove the declared unfit on idea. With a frustrated snort, Martin pushes his volume of case presented. Unless we are willing to fight a little dirty, we can shelve all the, these ideas. The girl is determined to ruin her life, and there is nothing we can do to stop her. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Excuse me. That's not fair. She's 17. It's not her fault she's naive. Then her dad should hire a child psychologist, not a lawyer. What about Joey's past? He has to have some sort of record. If we could nail him with a felony, this would be all over. Which will work until the next time she he decides to fall in love with the douchebag. Bo, that's a horrible thing to say. I'm not trying to be horrible, but I've been there, okay? I know how this ends. What are you talking about? He looks away from you and you and folds his arm folds his arms. When people know you're rich, they let they tell you all kinds of things. If you're young st and stupid, you believe them. Are you saying I'm saying my parents were smart about my truth and that there are a lot of people out there ready to take advantage of lonely rich kids. So are we supposed to feel sorry for the poor little rich boy in this story? Or did or did you learn from your mistakes? I'm just trying to add some context here. I appreciate the insight. I, for one, have no real experience of that world. If Bo can help us understand it, that's an asset. Exactly. I just think it helps to get into the right mindset, you know? Of course, but it actually leads you you to a real idea. I promise to be duly impressed. A few minutes later, Gigi returns with the coffee, beaming from ear to ear. I have an idea. Remember the high-profile custody case with the trust fund back in Connecticut, maybe? But before she can finish the sentence, the door bangs open again. Gabe storms in with a dark expression on his face. Whatever you're doing, drop it now. What? 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 Gigi glances down at her down at her hall of coffee as she's deciding whether to take his words literally. Bo, Bo plucks his cup from the tray before she can make any sudden moves. We need, we need to pivot immediately. The stakes for this case just got a lot more complicated. How complicated? Gabe slides his phone across the table. You pick it up and your stomach drops. It's a selfie of Lydia and Joey in a cheesy looking chapel. We're no longer trying to prevent Lydia Roswell's marriage to Joey. Now we have to find a way to undo it. Those two just got... They went to Vegas and got married? <sighs> Your only shot at keeping McGraw-Brin's best client just ran off to Vegas. Can you salvage this, or will you all be out of a job? Keep playing to find out. <sighs> I guess she didn't listen to her, listen to her gut at all. <sighs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. If you want to get notified of any videos I put up on my channel, hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next video.